Hello friends, in this class I will be discussing about the termination of the replication and uh, here we will be discussing about the eukaryotic termination and the prokaryotic termination as well. So let's start with the prokaryotic termination and we know that the bacterial genome is basically a circular DNA. This is the double strand and what happens during the replication the replication bubble is formed as we have discussed all these things in our previous videos and this kind of replication is called the theta replication because it's it, it is very much uh, similar with the structure called theta in geometry you will uh, know about all this a Greek letter so this is the this is the replication bubble and uh, this is the replication fork which can move in this side or which can move in that side so it is a bidirectional fork now what happens that uh, there are some sequences here uh, which is called a termination sequence this is a termination sequence and the ori orientation of the termination sequence are uh, different and this termination sequence length is 23 base pair now this termination uh, sequence orientation uh, is uh, towards uh, this in that in this side and towards this in this side right so now this uh, termination sequence is uh, recognized by a specific kind of protein which is known as tus protein that is termi terminus utilization uh, sequence protein so let me write it for you that is terminus utilization okay utilization sequence sequence protein okay so this is the TUS protein so in combination with the TUS sequence and the TUS protein this termination of the replication occurs in the prokaryotic uh, replication process and what happens that okay let me uh, make a little bit of space and let me clear all these things all right so now what happens that okay so when the replication fork is moving to uh, this uh, direction then uh, one strand which is in uh, 5 prime 3 prime uh, position so in that case the replication which has to happen in 5 prime 3 prime uh, uh, direction that means i'm talking about uh, leading strand and lag la lagging strand if i am taking this portion of the fork out this portion of the fork I am drawing here so now what is happening if this is my replication fork and this is again another replication fork which is this one this one I'm talking about okay now that is my mobile sorry so this is the 5 prime 3 prime and this is the 5 prime and 3 prime this is again the 5 prime and 3 prime and this is the 3 prime and 5 prime now uh, this fork is going into this direction and that fork is going to this direction now when this is 5 prime then uh, my RNA primer will be synthesized here in this portion and then the next one will be synthesized in this portion and the DNA replication uh, will be from 5 prime to 3 prime and then again 5 prime to 3 prime because this is the 5 prime end of the primer and this is the 3 prime end of the primer and as we know that the replication occurs in 5 prime to 3 prime direction so this portion this uh, strand which is called a lagging strand will synthesize DNAs in fragments and we know that these fragments are known as Okazaki fragment whereas in case of this strand uh, we can straight away synthesize a continuous strand because the RNA primer that is placed 
it is in this direction so now your new R DNA strand can move in that direction likewise the same thing can happen in uh, this fork as well so this is my pi prime end of the RNA primer so my replication will continue in this direction and it will be a continuous strand well in this case uh, there is the RNA primer this is the 5 prime end and this is the 3 prime end so the direction of the replication will be in this side and the next RNA primer will be placed when the replication fork has come up to uh, uh, this location so that the uh, DNA will be un unzipped and there will be some place uh, so that the RNA primer can be placed so in in this way uh, while um, oh this uh, this fork is moving in this direction there are two strands synthesized uh, getting synthesized one is the continuous strand and another one is the discontinuous strand so in this way within this two lines of the parental DNA strand another two lines of the daughter DNA strand will be synthesized from the, from this side to that side and again here also uh, between the two uh, parental strand two daughter strand will be synthesized from this direction to that direction now what happens they will uh, these two replication fork will come and meet at the terminal sequence which is just opposite to the origin of replication and uh, this is the uh, meeting point this is the termination point and uh, before really coming to this termination point they have to uh, they have to encounter this termination sequence and this is the sequence and associated with the TAS protein and this TAS protein actually blocks the DNA B uh, protein DNA B and as we have already discussed that this DNA B has the helicase function so when this DNA B protein function has been stopped by this TAS protein it will inhibit the the uh, unzipping of the DNA molecule and it and so the replication fork will stop its movement and this is very much directional so it this this direction uh, that's why I was telling you that uh, this uh, sequence has a specific direction and uh, specific orientation so the protein is bound to this in a specific manner so this protein will uh, stop this um, uh, this fork and that's uh, this uh, side of the molecule which has got the terminus uh, sequence and the TAS uh, protein associated with it uh, will also inhibit the uh, uh, the progression of this fork and now so this two fork will come and meet here and stop and now what is the consequence of this mechanism is this that after the replication is complete because half of the molecule has been replicated from this side half of the molecule has been replicated from that side now the ligase enzyme is there which combines the two strand together actually it ligates the two strands so now uh, this uh, two uh, this is the interlocked uh, let me I should have uh, drawn this thing much uh, okay uh, let me uh, let me uh, let me clean this up and let me draw the interlocked DNA molecule if, if this is my uh, parental strand uh, then uh, my next uh, this is my daughter strand which is interlocked with it because uh, you know uh, this was uh, this to interlock because uh, due to this mechanism and uh, now this interlocked uh, two DNA molecule which is in a concatenated form uh, will be uh, will free will be free from one another by the topoisomerase two enzyme and uh, this is the process of the uh, prokaryotic uh, t replication of the termination and now let us uh, go to the eukaryotic termination process of the replication and that is uh, very interesting again we know that the eukaryotic DNA is not uh, circular but it is a re linear DNA molecule so in that case if this is the linear DNA molecule let me draw it widely and this is the 5 prime end and this is the 3 prime end again this is the 3 prime end 
and this is the 5 prime end and uh, we know that uh, while synthesizing the leading strand you have to put uh, the RNA molecule here it, this is the 5 prime end this is, this is the 3 prime end so it will be a continuous strand but in case of the 5 prime 3 prime template strand uh, one has to put the RNA fragments here somewhere and here somewhere uh, so in that case uh, this if, if, if this is the sorry I have I uh, have done a mistake so uh, let me put it in this way that uh, if the strand is here this is the 5 prime end and this is the 3 prime end it will continuously synthesize in this way and again if, if this is my this is my uh, replication fork and again one has to synthesize the RNA fragment here this is the 5 prime end this is the 3 prime end it will again synthesize in that way so I have to place the RNA primer so I have to get uh, some space of the template now if uh, this RNA has been placed here so how can after the removal of the RNA from the uh, from the DNA strand this portion will remain unreplicated because after the removal of this uh, of this portion so what happens that this portion will remain sorry uh, this is my template strand this portion will remain untranslated so in that case uh, there is a specific kind of enzyme which is known as telomerase it will increase the template strand it will increase the template strand now uh, this RN this this telomerase is basically an enzyme which which has got an inbuilt R uh, RNA template and it takes the RNA template as the uh, temp uh, as a, as a as a reference strand and then it it increases the parental template now I'm really mm, I like uh, I have, I have, I, have mm, I have only three minutes time I don't know how, how to complete this one but what happens here that uh, when the enzyme has been uh, ha I I has been uh, you know associated with the strand like this it has a specific RNA template inside it and taking this RNA template as a reference it will increase uh, the length of the parental strand and this process will again continue in this portion as well uh, because the because this uh, DNA because this uh, telomerase enzyme uh, is placed here and RNA has been taken as the template and uh, the and the parental strand is increased uh, according to the uh, RNA template intrinsic RNA template of the telomerase enzyme so now when the uh, parental strand has been elongated uh, by uh, this specific uh, telomerase enzyme now what happens here um, okay and so now what happens here now you have got uh, specific you, ha uh, you have got a long strand of the parental DNA where you can place your RNA and then you can uh, continuous continuously synthesize your uh, DNA strand even after removal of this RNA you have completely um, replicated the complete strand of the parental strand because my strand was up to here so now it has been elongated up to this portion so now I can readily put my RNA primer here somewhere and I can uh, I can do my replication from 5 prime to 3 prime direction and so now my replication is complete uh, for this parental strand I hope this much of my uh, replication uh, was uh, termi termination video was fine if you have any other further question uh, then you can definitely send me a mail thank you for watching my video